everyone. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Hope you are all having a great day, and hopefully the sun is shining where you are in the world today. So, what I want to be doing is, I want to make today's video very much around buyer types. You may have heard of them, buyer personas, buyer types. There's plenty of different ways that people kind of call these different things as well. Um, but basically, what the idea here is is that. If you want to be speaking to a specific audience and you want to identify them, you want to create content that really gets people reaching out saying, hey, I love what it is that you do. This is the kind of person you're the coach, consultant, expert that I want. It's very important that you understand buyer types. This really taps into more of the psychological triggers that gets people to give out their credit card and be like, yes, I want to kind of pay you in full 2K, 5K, 10K, 50K, as much as 100K. Um, now, if you get this wrong, what you're going to find is that you're just going to be posting content, you're just going to post out there you get lots of people who are going to be like hey great content it sounds like everything's going well in business and everything but they're not actually paying you money okay or what may even happen is that you get people reaching out to you but they can't afford you they're just freebie seekers they're not your dream ideal client that you just love you work with you know those ones where you're just like oh i could just work with these all day the ones that get you when you wake up in the morning like yes i get to go on calls with these people chat to these people they're the kind of people that you vibe with okay so we're going to cover um like what are the different buyer types, how you can find these buyer types. I'll talk through some kind of examples out there of like famous people, you may say, who have got this really down pat in terms of their content as well. So at the end of this, you'll be understanding who my buyer type is, how can I research them and what type of content I need to create so I can actually create targeted messaging to speak to those. All right. So let's kind of start from the top because as obviously this is going to be the most important thing. It's like, what are the buyer types? Okay. So what exactly are buyer types? So I want you to imagine for yourself, you know, you're you're hosting a workshop and you've got a room full of potential clients. And this could be in person or it could be virtual, right? So each person that are coming in there, they have unique needs, they have different desires, and also they have very unique different behaviors. Now, here you need to understand that biotypes are essential. And they're essentially in the case that this helps you to categorize all of those people. So if you had a room of 100 people, let's say, they're not all going to be the same buyer type. Some buy, some people will buy differently to other people, okay? So think of these buyer types as almost personas you're creating based on behaviors, how they buy, which is the most important one, their motivations and their preferences as well. So when you can start identifying these types, you can then better tailor your messaging better tailor all of your content to actually address their specific needs okay so there's typically there are typically five types of common buyers that you're going to encounter at any given time and this has come through i've worked with hundreds of clients have thousands of customers and this is just from what i've seen in terms of observing in the market the clients that i've worked with as well but also getting a good insight into other clients and how they're actually observing their market as well so let's go through like the common buyer types and listen out to one which you think actually resonates because it's always good to know what type of buyer you actually are as well so the first one is the solution seeker so this is the person that is actively searching for a solution to the problem they're facing I love these, they're the best because they know they've got a problem and they're just, hey, I need to get a solution, I need to get this fixed, right? They're often motivated by pain points and they're very eager to take actionable strategies and tools that can actually provide the relief, right? It's kind of like if you've got a burst pump, a, a pipe, you want to find the solution very quickly, right? You know you've got a pain point, you just want to find that solution. So that's number one, the solution seeker. Number two, we've got the skeptic. Okay, so now skeptics, they're very cautious and they require lots to prove before making the decision. Right, so they'll dig deep into your credentials, they'll reviews, case studies, and they need to feel confident that you are the methods that you teach, they're effective, but they're also credible for them as well. So that's number two, the skeptic. Number three, have the quick fixer. These aren't really the best type of clients to work with um, because they're after immediate results and they want quick wins. OK, they're not looking for like long term solutions, but rather just short term fixes that provide instant gratification. Now, this does work well if you're often like a short program or something. You just want some quick wins. That works great. But if you're looking to build something sustainable. They probably don't make the best client to work with purely because 
instant wins are great but most of the time it's good to build those long-term solutions so that's the one number three the quick fix so then you've got number four which is the idealist so these people are ideally motivated by big picture goals aspirations right they're looking for transform transformative solutions to their problems and this actually then aligns with their values and their actual long-term vision for the business right i love these i just was actually on the call with someone and said, i want to get private jet i want to make millions of dollars okay and then number five you've got the budget conscious so kind of want to stay away from these especially if you're doing like a high ticket program or something that's just considerable investment so these budget conscious people they're very focused on the cost very focused on the value they just want to make sure that they're basically getting the best bang for their buck and will compare options carefully just to find the most cost effective solution okay so there's five there if you're taking notes so number one what we've got is the solution seeker we've got the skeptic the quick fixer the idealist and we've also got the budget conscious so now that we know what the buyer types are the question becomes like why are buyer types actually important right so let's talk about why understanding these buyer types are so important especially for coaches consultants experts people that are selling um, programs or offers online so first off knowing the buyer types allows you to tailor your messaging to speak directly to each types of buyers unique needs and desires okay so instead of like a generic approach where you're just trying to push something out there and trying to speak to everyone it's not really going to work that well you're just delivering content that resonates deeply and personally if you really understand the buyer type All right so second this helps with your segmenting and your marketing efforts as well so you can create targeted campaigns targeted content personalized outreach that appeal to these specific buyer types leading to better engagement higher open rates um, more click-through rates more actual kind of conversion rates as well and lastly, the final one is that you need to understand the buyer types. This helps you be more efficient with your resources. You can focus on what actually works for each type and you invest in your time and your effort where you actually will have the most impact, okay? So as busy business owners, I know that, and I understand that you don't wanna be spending lots of time posting content if it's not actually gonna hit the right type of people and get those dream clients reaching out to you. So now I wanna get onto is like, how can we actually identify these different buyer types? Now this is very important because if you mess up this or if you get this wrong, you'll find that again, you're gonna be attracting the wrong type of clients that can't afford you, they're not a good fit, right? Most people think this is very complicated, but it's very straightforward and a very simple process. So I just want you to go through these very simple key steps to find this. So this is how you're gonna identify your buyer types. So first you need to analyze your existing clients. So go through your existing client base and you need to see what are the common traits or the patterns that you can identify. So what challenges are they facing and what solutions are they actually seeking? So that's part one. Two, you want to conduct surveys, interviews, you want to reach out, get some feedback from, from people as well. So this is where you can reach out to your existing audience, be it on your socials or email list with different surveys like interviews, right? So you want to ask questions, their goals, their pain points, decision making processes, anything. This direct feedback just gives you invaluable because once you can understand that, it's a lot easier to speak to those different goals and pain points. You then want to use there's some analytics tools that you can use as well. So Google Analytics, there's like social media listening tools, email marketing reports, that kind of stuff. This will look at kind of engagement rate, click-through rate, conversion patterns, all those kind of things as well. And then finally, you want to start creating these detailed personas. Now, um, these are kind of be based on your research. You're going to be focusing a lot more on uh, developing like these detailed buyer personas. And this is really just focused on like needs, goals, pain points, fears, buying behaviors, buying processes. Like how long does it usually take? Um, how do they prefer to receive their information? And then you're just going to make these specific as possible. So, for example, like one of the things that I've done recently with a few clients, we've created different personas where it's like, hey, Emily, the solution seeker. So. She's a busy professional looking for effective time management strategies or John budget conscious who's focused on finding affordable coaching options. Right. So that's the kind of how you go and find them. Um, and then number four, like looking at actually how could you use this? Because there's a, there's a difference. Now you know how to use them and you can then understand, well, you know, how do I identify them? You then want to actually start using them in the content. So once you've identified these buyer types, it's then time to use all of that knowledge and you want to craft content that actually connects with these people, the actual people that you want to be reaching out to. Okay. So to do this, you just really want to make sure that you're tailoring your message. Very specific, right? So 
But I say tailor message, it really needs to be targeted to that type of buyer type that you'd like to attract more of. OK, so you want to create your content. You want to address the specific needs of each of these buyer types. So, for example, if you are focused on solution seekers, just want to provide detailed solutions and actionable advice for those skeptics. You need to share more proof and testimonials to help build trust. OK, so you just need to understand, like, who is my ideal buyer type? How can I create my messaging to, to be tailored towards them? So number two, you want to segment this outreach. OK, so if you're doing cold outbound, if you're doing messaging or anything, you can do a segmentation. You want to create different campaigns, social media ads or that for the different type of buyer types. I tend to just really kind of pick my buyer type that I want more of in my content and really just focus on that. OK, so, for example, I work with like experts, coaches, and most of the time I want solution driven people who understand they've got a problem. They're just looking for a solution. They're in that state where they're not really thinking about anything. They're just like, hey, I've got a problem. I want to get this solution. Where do I go to find this solution? And then three, you want to just personalize your office. So, for example, quick figure fixes, they might prefer workshops or just short term. Hey, I've got a problem. I just want a quick fix for it. Um, for idealists, they might want a 12 month program where they you know, really want a comprehensive program that builds out the plan to help them get to their long term goals. So there's different offers and this is how your offer suite can speak to those different types of people. So having workshops, masterclasses, um, PDFs, short training videos and also long term programs. This will help you to then identify and reach to different type of buyer types. Then for making sure that your targeted content, you create and targeted content. So social media content. It needs to speak to different buyer types, right? For example, um, budget conscious clients, they may focus on cost effective strategies while video like idealists, right? They might want to tr um, highlight transformation impact of your services. How does their life look after that's changed? OK, so remember here. Every different type of buyer type is different. So the key is to speak to directly to each type of unique needs and the motivations for each of those buyer types. And usually you want to try and pick at least one, maybe two, not all of them. Right. Who are you speaking to? Because, again, if you're doing a low ticket workshop, that's going to maybe speak to the quick fixes. It's not going to speak to the long term solutions. Right? If you're doing a long term 12 month program, that's going to be speaking to the idealists. So you need to build out a bigger picture of what that may look like. So this approach not only attracts more qualified leads, for the actual offer you're promoting, but also brings stronger relationships with your existing audience as well. Um, so let's look at some like real world examples of how this is in practice and just some successful coaches, consultants um, that are actually using these buyer types in their strategies as well. So I'm going to pronounce this right, Marie Folio, right? So what she does is she actually effectively addresses all the different buyer types with her B school program. So the time recording has got a B school program, right? So for the solution seekers, she highlights the practical benefits, the results of her program. And for skeptics, she provides extensive testimonials and case studies. So if you don't know who she is, um, she's a host, entrepreneur, philanthropist. She's on guys. Go, go look her up, basically, as well. So that's for her. Now, Tony Robbins, as you know, like number one mindset coach in the world, business coach, life coach, whatever you want to call it. He also tailors it to various buyer types. For example, for his quick fixes, he offers high energy, impactful events. For idealists, he promotes his long term programs that align with personal growth and transformation. And then you've got Amy Porterfield, the course queen, you may say. Um, Amy Porterfield, she creates targeted content for different buyer types again. So her webinars and content are designed to appeal to the solution seekers uh, with actionable tips and to the skeptics. She also shows the proof and the success stories as well. So these are just three examples of fame, more famous coaches, more like well-known established coaches. And we may think about as well, um, but it's then shown how they're understanding. And one thing I'd say is go and look through their content, go to their sales pages, go to their offer pages, go to their websites, go to their channels, and you'll see their Facebook posts, LinkedIn, TikTok, wherever it may be, you'll see a lot of different types of content specific to a different buyer type. Now, if you loaded up the actual buyer type list, you'll say, oh, that's speaking to this type of buyer type. And you can then replicate that language, what they were talking about, how they showed up. And you can use content hacking, which, you know, is the, the method that we use within um, the way that I teach a lot of my clients, content hacking. You can look into that and you can basically replicate it in your own voice, in your own tone, style, manner, all that kind of stuff as well. So there's just some examples for you.
Now, I want to finally kind of wrap this up here is I just want to make sure that I'm giving you everything that you can really understand this is that there's some there's some things to keep in mind when it comes to creating biotypes um, because most people will jump in with one biotype in mind, but you want to kind of understand that this just evolves over time. So you, you're going to consistently gather feedback, you're going to adjust your personas, strategies, all those kind of things accordingly. So that's number one. So you, as with most things, you should always be flexible and open to change, right? Because you're never going to get it right first time, second, third, fourth, maybe in the hundredth time, it may not be right because everyone changes, buyers change, behaviors change, audience change, um, algorithms change as well. So you want to test all these different things. So experiment with different content types, messaging, see what actually resonates with each buyer type and use A-B testing, especially if you're doing like sales pages, offer pages, emails, split A-B testing, see which one gets the best results. Um, automation, that's another good one. Obviously, if you're doing a lot of um, like lead gen, if you've got any kind of forms or anything as well, you can start leveraging automation to get more personalized at scale. I tend not to do too much of that as well, because especially like lots of groups or this kind of stuff, it can get confusing. Um, that's why I tend to only speak to that one buyer type or two and just really speak to those. Educate your team. So if you have a team, you just, again, if you've got content managers, VAs, anyone that helps with your content and your messaging, just help make sure they understand who your buyer type is. Tailor that communication strategy, so your DMs, all that kind of stuff. It all comes through this buyer type because people need to be spoken to of a different type of message, right? So there's the kind of like basis of the buyer types. So if you want to implement these, great. Hopefully you've taken a lot of notes here. You can further enhance your ability to connect with your audience and kind of drive more results. Um, there you have it. So that's like a deep dive of my knowledge based on buyer types, how to use them for your coaching, consultant, expert business. But remember, knowing your buyer type is all about creating content and strategies that actually truly resonate with them, that they need to feel understood. Because once they feel understood and that you're speaking to them, you that kind of like fly on the wall and speaking to them in their content, that's where they're going to reach out and say, this person gets me. That offer sounds something that I really want. Okay. Now, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, more tips, insights in terms of messaging, strategy, and content creation. Drop a comment below. Love to hear your kind of experiences with buyer types um, or any kind of questions that you have. Thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next video.